it is uh, indeed uh, a great honor for me uh, to be overseeing these uh, proceedings. Just to give you a bit of a background, this morning we officially launched the Johannesburg Institute for Advanced Study, which is located in an Oxford-style uh, uh, Melville uh, campus uh, of University of Johannesburg. Johannesburg style. <laughs> uh, uh, for, for, for those of you who don't know, we have uh, a fifth campus uh, of the University of Johannesburg. And uh, this afternoon we will, we will really be talking about the next 25 years. Many of you will be around in 25 years and I'm sure you have an interest as to what will happen in the next 25 years. And uh, we are basically going to talk about, about uh, the, we chose this topic in the light of the fact that uh, the Institute of Advanced Study is supposed to be the institute that is supposed to allow uh, thinkers, opinion makers, and doers to reflect on how society interse intersects with all facets of, of life whether it be the economy, whether it, it be uh, the society, and so on and so forth. So uh, in that vein, we are going to talk about what is the next 25 years. And we have a rich panel, which will be uh, Professor Achil Mbembe, uh, who will start, then Professor Alexander Zender, uh, who will follow, then Professor Bertel Anderson. I will start. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and uh, Professor Fiona Trejena, uh, who is also going to speak. Then uh, Professor Sina and Professor Lansing. The bios of, of these distinguished panels are actually uh, in, in the program. They are too lengthy for me to read. If I had to read this, we will be here for a very long time. So uh, many of them don't need any introduction. So I am going to, without any further ado, I'm going to ask uh, Professor Anderson to lead us. Thank you very much, and thank you for the introduction, and thank you for coming. Uh, so um, we are today, this is a historic day, we are starting this fantastic new collaboration between the University of uh, Johannesburg and Nanyang Technological University from Singapore in this uh, uh, Institute of Advanced Sciences, and we may come back to that. So I come uh, from Singapore. I may not look like that, but that is the truth. <laughs> and and uh, Singapore, of course, means the city of the lion. So, Singa means lion, you know, that you have a city of the lions. But I only seen one lion of the, my nine years in Singapore, and this is the mare lion. That is a sort of a statue lion uh, spitting water at the harbor of Singapore. Of course, here in Africa, here in South Africa, you have real lions, very active lions and to the left here you see a 10 year old very potent, uh, potent I could say lion and that symbolizes University of Johannesburg that turns 10 years like that. So we, the, the, this timid lion will now team up with this very vigorous lion in the next years to come. <laughs> yeah. So let me talk a little bit about the future of university, but let me give you just a, a small, modest picture of uh, Nanyang Technological University and our own Institute of Advanced Science, and I try to make a Swedish smorgasbord about, uh, of these various things. So, uh, some basic facts of uh, Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. We're a quite big university, not as big as, as yours when we come. We have about 33,000 students. Very international, you know, uh, uh, almost 20% undergraduates and on the PhD level it's 80% uh, international students. The staff, uh, professors, 75, 70% international. And of course, 
which many people don't think people speak Chinese in Singapore. They speak English and the language is the common language, I guess, just like here. And uh, we teach and do communicate in English. Otherwise, this poor Swede would never have made it there. Um, we are a big engineering university. Actually, 50% of our university is engineering. And, uh, uh, and we also have a business school. We have uh, science. We have also humanities, uh, art, and social science. We have an art school. And I think it's very fantastic to have an art school at a big engineering university. This is really nice interdisciplinarity. We have a new school of medicine, and that is together with Imperial College in London. And this is the first time that Imperial College has left the mundane quarters of South Kensington to go somewhere else. And they went to uh, NTU in Singapore. It hopefully some people of education. We have National Institute of Education. And of course, Singapore is quite well known for education in many areas. And there are already links in those areas, which I'm very happy about. There are a lot of others. The Ratanamna School of International Studies, that is a very renowned school in political sciences about terrorism uh, and uh, various things. Um, we have, uh, oh, this is about the rankings. We have been fairly well ranked in the world. We are 39 in the world in the QS uh, university rankings. And we're number one among the young universities in the world, because this university is actually only 24 years of age. It started in 1991 in its present form. And um, so, and we've been quite fast moving. And in engineering, for example, we are one of the biggest, but we are also starting to become one of the best, being in the top 10 of our engineering colleges in, in the world. And it's very interesting how this university has developed so fast, because you, if you go back to year 2000, there was not much research at NTU. It was basically uh, uh, an institution for education of engineers and business people for the Singapore economy. And the real research uh, resources was only coming around 2005. And um, Singapore is a little bit of an impatient country, so I can say things are moved very fast. And I think if there's something about NTU as fast it has been able to, to change into this. And many times when I talk about this to politicians in Europe and so on, they say, oh, oh, universities are impossible, they never move and so on, you know. But I think academia can move fast if you have the right political support, leadership, and of course a few dollars doesn't hurt either. Uh, this may be the... the, the the, the curve that uh, I'm mo most proud over. This is citation impact. And of course, you can take all this ranking with a pinch of salt. But citation impact, I think, I is a real parameter. And we are now number one in Asia. And uh, 10 years ago, we were far down the line. I'm very happy when I show this for the board, you know, there's mo mostly businessmen. They think this is market share, so they are very happy <laughs> about this. No, 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 no you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And of course, I say we are number one I in Asia. That also means we are number one in Singapore. But because National University of Singapore is, of course, the old established university in Singapore, and we have passed them. But it's actually not my point is that we are passed on, because this is a very good uh, 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 plot for the small nation called Singapore, because the number one and two uh, universities in Singapore are the Singaporean, three and a half million country that has now passed all the universities in Japan, for example. So this, of course, we talk about the race, rise of Asia in academia. But it's also a repositioning within Asia one should be aware of. Um, I should talk about the future. And it's very hard to make predictions, particularly about the futures. And, uh, but here I still have, coming back to university rankings, to the left you have the rankings how it is today. To the right is in 25 years. <laughs> and I, you will see that our that our Institute of Advanced Science is going to have a very catalytic, catalytic effect. <laughs> and this is the only safe prediction I will make now during my talk. <laughs> yeah. So, 
But of course, seriously, if you look at the rankings, of course there is an increase of Asian universities there. Those that are going out is actually U.S. public universities that are losing out in this sort of <coughs> global competition or whatever we were going to call it. But of course this will continue and uh, in 2040 we'll, go, we'll be here as I said. So what about the future trends? Research funding is very important for any research active university and I think it's going to be much more international and global in the future. Because you can say today the business world, multinational companies and so are entirely global. And research, R&D, cannot only be national money and connected to local economies. It's sort of a picture that national tax money going to pay national researchers as a national university and they make national research that leads to a national discovery who's going to be nationally exploited and give back money to the national system. That is yesterday or even the day before yesterday. And this I feel we have a, because most research funding today is national. In Singapore, one would really make a point of that this is Singaporean money for Singaporean research and so on, but also in other countries. So it's quite clear that this model, business model, national business model, when it comes to knowledge, will not be able to continue for the f future. So it's going to be much more public and private funding, but it's going to be much more international. And I herald that that's going to be a lot of international research funding organizations, international um, uh, funding uh, research councils. And when I mean international, I actually mean global. Because in Europe, of course, we have already the European Union and, 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 and so on. But that still only counts for about 10, 15 percent. Still, even in Europe, with all the money in Brussels, 85 percent of the research funding is na national, actually. <coughs> we have already several, you can say, uh, the Human Frontiers program is, is a global research council today already in the life sciences, in the neurosciences. So here, the future is already here, so to speak. We have on the more um, uh, uh, donation side, the, the, the Bill and Linda Gates uh, Foundation, we talked about it today, is also have a global uh, aspect. And the, th and the last one is, is that many universities will go international. You're not only university researchers will cross borders, but universities as institutions will, 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 will cross borders. We have seen today many top American universities being in Singapore. MIT is, as, is as an institution present in, in Singapore. ETH uh, is that many other European u universities. And I just mentioned Imperial College going to set up a medical school in, um, in, 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 in Singapore. And it's not that they send a couple of researchers to help us. That it's actually an institution and location in, in Singapore. In China that also happens. Maybe another good example is Haifa from the little country of Israel, or a proactive country but still small that the Technion in Haifa is setting up a campus together with, with, your, um, with Cornell in New York, for example. So knowledge knows no borders, and universities and research and education in the future will also probably see no borders, or much less anyway. University structures, uh, I think it's going to be much more fussy borders between disciplines. Maybe that has already started, but it's still very much uh, disciplinary oriented universities. And um, it's going to be less obvious in the future to have universities with disciplinary school and colleges. Simply because the front line of knowledge will be at the border regions between disciplines. <coughs> and if we have sort of an 1890 type of structure, in the 2040, then we are old-fashioned. 
So I believe there's going to be much more thematic and in interdisciplinary structures. At least there are going to be much more matrix structures where you tie to, to, to bridge this, uh, uh, the, the school system. And that's where many universities, including our own, is at uh, the, the present. Um, I think we have to be realistic that we need to maybe deliver more from our research, so science parks and uh, things are probably going to be much a vital part of, of all universities in, in, in the future to take you know, uh, research into dollars and other things. Education. I believe today education, tertiary education is taking major cha changes. And I say we are going from Gutenberg to Gates. Uh, in, uh, in the way we're going gonna to teach. Uh, or teach is maybe not even the, an adequate word, maybe how we're going to stimulate learning in going from Gutenberg to Gates. And uh, of course it's based on ICT-based pedagogues, the MOOCs. We probably only have seen, seen the beginning. I don't think that everything is going to be MOOCs, but MOOCs going to be there I I in a way. And uh, how will we increase uh, it's not only going to be education for uh, young people after they finish uh, high school. I believe that the campus in the future is going to be a reflection of society in a 20 to 80 years of age perspective. I think a very important question is how will we, what we're going to learn about the brain? Because that is probably also a safe prediction that the brain is still a white spot in our knowledge. but in for 25 years it's not. We're going to understand the, the, the brain, we're going to understand what is memory, what we understand uh, uh, how the brain works much more. And I'm sure that's also going to influence how we design the learning processes. Um, I also think it's very important how we relearn. Is the pedagogics, when a 20-year-old person going to learn, then a 65-year-old person going to learn the same? And will English be the really entirely dominating language for university education? It is not that today, and for student exchange, in many times it's a limiting factor. Of course, in research today you could say that English has been the lingua and totally, but will it be that also in education? I believe so, but that's another. I wrote an article in a Swedish newspaper one year ago, and the title of it, Are Swedish Universities Too Swedish? You know where I come from. <laughs> more private, more public? I guess people would automatically say, oh, it's going to be much more private funding and so on. I'm not 110% sure about that, actually. I think... Uh, countries, governments will not outsource the most important thing and that is the young people and their education. That's my thinking. Um, if I would talk to the board in Singapore they would argue against this, I know, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know my time is running out, I, I don't, I don't going to talk so much more, uh, only another half an hour. Uh, <laughs> I already highlighted this more interdisciplinarity. And I believe that in 2040 we see more, not less, institute advanced studies like the one we are starting today. I actually would like to talk it to the Institute of Interdisciplinary Advanced Studies, but that may be too mouthful. But that's, I think, what we all mean when we talk uh, 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 about it. So we do a lot of that in Singapore uh, already, but uh, this uh, collaboration here is going to put us to another level. And I would also say interdisciplinary. I've been involved in uh, deciding the Nobel Prize when I've been in the Nobel Committees in Stockholm. And you could say Nobel Prizes are sort of the top you know, discoveries in physics, chemistry and so on. But even when we decide <laughs> about Nobel Prizes today, many of them are quite interdisciplinary. I've been particularly involved in the Chemistry Prize and we rarely give the Chemistry Prize to mainstream chemistry anymore. It's chemistry in the interface to uh, medicine and biology, 
chemistry in the interface to physics, chemistry in the interface to environment. So even when it's the top of the academic iceberg, interdisciplinary comes in. And um, we, if you look at the Nobel Prizes last year, the physics prize was uh, for blue light emitting diodes. It was basically engineering. The chemistry prize was to develop high re resolution microscopy. It was physics. Medicine was for cognition. That speaks for itself. <coughs> so, today is an historic day. Johannesburg Institute Advanced Studies, Johannesburg Institute Advanced Interdisciplinary Studies, and NTU. We are very happy to participate in that. Topics I'm sure are we going to need to address sustainability, climate, the brain, economics, cities, not forgetting the future of education and a good ending here, the future of universities. Thank you. The University of Johannesburg. Rethink. Reinvent.